Welcome to another episode of Better Catholics. Once again, I'm Father Melvin. I'm Bishop Ryan. I'm Donna Flores. And we have a very special guest today. Uh, special because uh, he's my deacon, he's my brother in the church, in the parish. Uh, everybody loves this guy. Uh, none other than, of course, Deacon Tony. Uh, I don't want to mess Pronounce up the his last name. Pronounce his last name. I don't want to mess up the last name. So I'll, but I'll try. It's uh, Yaro, Yaro, Yaro that you got it right. Yeah, see? Yeah, yes. uh, is the accent correct? Yaro yeah. Buemel. Yeah. Yaro Buemel. It's not yeah. Yaro Buemel. Yaro Buemel. Uh, oh, so Yaro I got Buemel. it wrong. You're just Yaro being nice. It's close. Oh, close. Oh. Okay. Uh, would you mind me uh, asking if, you know, where, where did you come from? The, the island. From God? From, <laughs> <laughs> apart from, it's apart from, from space. Apart from being created in the image and likeness of God. But the the name, the Yaro Yorobumal last so, name is like a yeah. uh, alien to me. Yeah. <laughs> so and the last name that is uh, we have in the back home is, is a given name. Um, unlike here, when when you have child, you name your child after the father's last name. But ours is a given name. So my name is combination of three names that they cut, 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 and they put them together. Mm -hmm. And and then they came up with Yaropa mm. yeah. So it's... So it's nothing really, uh, you know, uh, distinct about uh, your place. Or is it common in... It's common. A lot okay. of... Uh, some of um, the families, they will name their kids after uh, something that they will name them that has a meaning to oh. it. Uh, but my name is combined of uh, my uncle and my dad and, you know, the, the brother that passed away. Mm -hmm. And they usually let, like name some uh, after somebody who had passed mm -hmm. you know, for them to be able to remember, mm -hmm. you know, the, the person that passed. Now here you can um, you can see like Donna Flores, you know, you know, yes. okay, which Flores, you know, and then you kind of know. You know the uh, the generation, but here is a Tony Yorbama. So, uh, which family is that? Mm. But back home, they know. And home is so the home. <laughs> the home is I came from the island of uh, Woliai, um, outer island of Yap. That's mm -hmm. about about three hundred miles um, away from uh, the main island of Yap. Oh wow, that's far. That's far. Do, you, do we have a lot of uh, people that came from Yap uh, here in Saipan? We have a um, mix. Uh, uh, so we are, when we are out here in these areas, whether it's here or Guam, in the state, we uh, call ourselves as Yapis. Because mm -hmm. yeah, we came from Yapis. that island. Yapis. Yapis. Um, but if you want to go into... Like where in Yap you're from? So oh, I'm from the the outer island of mm. of Yap, mm. yeah. and it consists of many islands um, far from from the main. Mm. So the farthest is Satawa, mm. and that's the, which is more closer to uh, Chuk. Yeah. Well, the reason why we invited uh, Deacon Tony today in our program is. Because we want to know more about uh, the different communities in, in the island. Actually, Deacon Tony was the one uh, contact person, one of the two contact persons for the Synod on Synodality with the sector on uh, the Refalawash community. When we say Refalawash community, we're talking about people that live in the island, regardless of where you are from. So if I am from Saipan, am I considered a Rifalawash also or? Well, Rifalawash is here, Rifalawash, what do you say Rifalawash is referred to the Carolinians. Carolinians, okay. That are living here. Mm, okay. Um, I am, I came from Yap. Do I consider myself as a Rifalawash? Mm. Yes, I am a Rifalawash. But I grew up in different place. So mm -hmm. Rifalawash means like you're from the 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 islands yeah so 
So the reality of the reality of our society and also of our church here in the diocese is, it, is that we are composed of different people coming from the different islands here in the in the middle of the Pacific. Um, not only that we are composed of different people from the different islands, we also have other people coming from the different countries. Like we have people from the Philippines, uh, from South Korea. We have uh, the Chinese. We have Russia, Japanese. Russia. We also have Russian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have pretty much everything. It's like a United Nation of... Uh, of you know the Pacific here in in the CNMI, um, and the church is full of that people. Mm -hmm. You know, very diverse in nature. The question, therefore, on whether we as a church uh, are we uh, doing a good job in welcoming all these communities mm -hmm. in, into the church, getting them involved in into the life of the church. These are probably things that we can talk about. Today, um, being in charge of the, the dialogue to, to the different communities here in, in Saipan, what are your uh, realizations or what are their um, maybe suggestions, comments, you know, with regards to the performance of the church in the different uh, communities? Well, thank you for you know, that question. You know, I was happy that... Um, I was able to to meet with with uh, a few people from the uh, Carolinian um, community, the followers community, um, in regards to the synod and synodality. So we we had our first meeting, and um, we talk about you know what the church can do, you know, to be more welcoming to the group of you know, the, the followers. Mm. Um, so a lot of the things that they, um, they shared with me was more of, you know, how we really do when we go to church mm. um, and we do all of the things at the church. And um, when we, people come, we kind of looking at them differently, treated them differently. Mm. Uh, things were were um, they are not uniform in mm -hmm. in uh, you know this church is imposing this one and this church is not imposing this so they're kind of more of a confused side that you know which one would they go um, they would follow mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these you know people are they've been in 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 um, been f coming to church, but when they experience just one experience that they will, you know, experience at the church, that will throw them off. And so I, I'm not, I'm not going to come. I'm, I don't feel welcome mm. to be at the right. church uh, because um, <clears throat> uh, people, they will have their own saying, you know, what needs to be done, especially those that they have really taken care of the church. They, they volunteer at the church. But they are more open. They are more open to to come in and be part of uh, the church community. What they can contribute to the to the church. Yeah. It was probably three years ago that we launched this what we call Refollowers Ministry, <laughs> and Deacon Tony is in that team with Father Sid and and uh, parishioners like Malua and uh, uh, many others. And, uh, you know, as we are recording this, I know um, it's, um, you know, we have uh, uh, seminarians from Yap, uh, Dixon, mm -hmm. and, and uh, another uh, Jesuit scholastic from Croatia, Mati, who are spending this week of time and reflection with the Rifalawash youth. And, and really this is a product also of our efforts on how we can minister to uh, the Pacific Islanders, the Rifalawash in particular. So what it is, is this really has the foundational uh, underpinning of this is, again, you know, scripture and God created us in his image and likeness. So whether you're from Yap, I'm from the Philippines, 
you're from the States, you know, Donna Moore, Why are you looking Flores. at me like <laughs> <laughs> We're all children of God. We no, we're all children. And so from the reality society and as a church, we recognize that we are a church of many cultures. Right. And so thus comes the descriptive word multicultural. We're a multicultural church. But that's only one step. Recognizing the different ethnic cultural backgrounds would comprise then like, okay, we are a church of many cultures. But when you ask the question of this, how are they being received? How do they participate in the church dynamics? That's when I guess the challenges come in. So I then would like to borrow the word from recognizing the multi multicultural aspect of the church into what we would call interculturality. And what does that mean? When you say intercultural, there is this sense of interaction with one culture and another culture. You remain who you are, created in the image and likeness of God, but we bring with us our gifts, our traditions, our customs, our food, our ways of doing things, and we welcome that. And the goal of the church is, as we used in our previous discussion, is integration. We don't want you to change of who you are, but we want you to bring your gifts, the richness of your culture and all of that onto the table. Uh, again, even in, in scriptural <clears throat> passages, there's a shift from, you know, uh, uh, giving them a sit on the table as to like recognizing each one as a member of the body of Christ, right? This is from St. Paul. When you talk about the body, there's the head, there's the hand, there's the heart, there's the feet. All of us are important parts of the body. And obviously it's a principle, it's a concept, but to apply that, does it really work? Let me take an example. I made a survey last year. Look at two parishes. I think I made a comparison between the parishes of Mount Carmel Cathedral and Christ Roy Parish. Look at the composition of the members of the Parish Pastoral Council. How many are from the Rifalawash community? How many are, you know, uh, are from, 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 of Chamorro descent? How many are Filipinos? You look at the ethnic representation, right? And the Paris Pastoral Council or even the Finance Council, these are consultative bodies. They help. They give input as to the, the, the decision-making process of the parish. Sad to say they're not represented and that's a reality. So I believe for me as a leader of the church, the goal is how can we make it like one step further? Not only do we recognize the different ethnic cultural groups, but how can they interact that, that move towards interculturality by giving them voices, you know, giving them, you know, really uh, responsibilities that they're also involved in, 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 for lack of a better term, power dynamics in the parish. Right. So I don't know. Uh, I, I spoke a lot. Don't win. You know, it's just so interesting because in my line of work, which is special education, you know, it's so um, it's regulated and we report on several things. And one of them is what a concept you brought up and I'm going to give you a term for it. And it's called representativeness. Mm -hmm. So that's um, including people from different uh, walks of life. <laughs> parents and different um, background ethnicities, are they all being represented? Mm -hmm. Are they, rep you know, in, in our program? And so it's interesting how just, just in so many ways, the, the concepts that we have as a program mm -hmm. that we've, you know, that's come to reg be as regular terms for us, it's now expanding into the, into the community and, and into different ways of, um, of working with each other and organization wise. And it's, it's just, it, it tickles me because mm -hmm. here I am thinking special ed is one of the marginalized, um, community, you know, communities. And yet we're, we're structured that way that everybody is now looking to feed off of concepts that we've we, we have already these things are already established and then you use a fancy term but we don't even have to get as technical or uh yeah. in terms of that we go back to inclusion how mm -hmm. are we including mm -hmm. people uh 
not everybody is uh, confrontational. So mm-hmm. maybe yes. we need to take the initiative and walk up to them and say, hey, would you like to read? Mm-hmm. Let right. them decide. But it's just the fact that you are coming up and you are inviting, you're ex- extending that opportunity to the person. That's the sense mm-hmm. of belonging. And we just keep repeating mm-hmm. ourselves on that. But we're just addressing this on so many levels, whether it be with uh, conversations with Polly Charlie, you know, in the diocese or out in the community. Mm-hmm. And now we're dealing with it here. So it's just all meshing together, mm-hmm. you know, and really these are just it's just a matter mm-hmm. of including people, making them mm-hmm. feel like <clears throat> They're important here. Mm-hmm. It's not a matter of just coming to church, sitting in there and giving your tinsuli, right? Or your mm-hmm. limosna, right? Mm-hmm. It's more, it's uh, involving them, mm-hmm. giving them ownership to to this. This is their faith already. Mm-hmm. So let's get everybody active in the faith and come to church. This mm-hmm. is how we're bringing people to church. It's I, I don't know. We, we've just expressed it yeah. in so many mm-hmm. ways. So, right. And the word inclusion that you mentioned, Donna, mm-hmm. is really in the mind of the U.S. Bishops Conference. You know, a, a document for Pacific Islanders encountering the living Christ in harmony. When you mention about how others are non-confrontational, that is a characteristic of Pacific Islanders. Mm-hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I think in our culture here in general, Right. I have a problem with you. I have difficulty confronting you. I'd rather keep quiet and keep things inside. So this document really recognizes the fact that every culture is different. And uh, for the Pacific Islanders, this sense of harmony is a much valued, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, perhaps, you know, uh, thing that we should we should we should recognize in each one, because you know, Westerners, they're more confrontational. Yeah, you know, right. you, you don't like me, you, you tell me. They're more assertive. Yeah, you're more assertive, yeah. you know, but others are not. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, and we're all here in the Pacific. We all, you know, say we're brothers and sisters here. So let's act like it. Mm-hmm. Let's be brothers and sisters. This is who we are. This is how we identify ourselves. We call each other sis, sis <laughs> and bro, brother. You know, we, we use those terms. Um but I think we mean it. I mean, mm-hmm. some people may say we use it loosely, but no, yeah. I don't think so. I when I call you brother, I I mean it. You, you know, um, yeah. there there it's something to. I don't know. I I just really take uh, heart, take it mm-hmm. to heart because yeah, I mean we're it brothers and sisters in Christ, yes. going back to our identity created in the image and likeness of God. I'm curious mm-hmm. to to hear from Deacon Tony about. Your life coming in from the outer island right. in Yap, in here, the word inclusion, you know, integration, being different. How was your experience and how is your experience now? Are, do you feel you are fully integrated into the society, into the church? Or you feel also that you are decentered sometimes? Um, when I first got here yeah every anybody that is going to go to a new place they will f- always feel left out mm. from from the group um when i start my years at nmc and you know i always found myself you know sitting alone because you know i don't i have to look for my you know the the students from that came uh, from the same island and we kind of Group together, and you know the the other group from you know Carolina, Chamorro, Chinese. You know they will be. So I kind of find myself you know working slowly into it, and as I got back to you know into church and be more um, uh, active in the in the church, I found myself like really being. I felt really part of the community. Uh, I f- felt the um, the love of the community that you know they they will extend to me, and they're very open and 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 I'm very grateful that you know where I am, um, everyone would just express their you know their their um, appreciation for me to being there, being their uh, um, a deacon that will help them in anything that they need. So I felt included 
um, I'm, and I'm very appreciative of you know uh, what I've been experiencing. Does the work of the pastor also helps in making you feel included? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. Uh, prove, prove it. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, well, well. We'll talk later. <laughs> no. <laughs> by me mentioning that, because I think it's an important task also for priests to be inclusive, mm -hmm. right? And yes, we're we're humans also, but you know, having preferential, uh, you know, uh, perhaps you know, option or like you know favoring one cultural group to another um should not be there we try as much as possible to be inclusive i know right. this are easily said and done course, right right but it it is a challenge for us to truly be inclusive and you know if we are guided by that principle of being brothers and sisters created in the image and likeness of god then it doesn't matter whether you're from this part of the world or that island or here. And sometimes it's not the priest. Sometimes it's the people that are actually active in that parish mm -hmm. already that hold judgment and make people feel unwanted. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, we, yeah, we just, if we're supposed to be without judgment, then why, why do we feel it? when we sit in the church. Yeah, we need, we need really to be more welcoming in the church. One of the things that I, that I've read in the synthesis that, uh, that was submitted to me from the refollowers group was that really they felt left out. You know, mm. that's, that's the term they, they use. They felt left out or they feel unwelcome. Mm, that's uh, strong. That's, you know, that's in, yeah. in, in the church. These are, sentiments coming mm -hmm. from from the people and I, I was reading it and i said oh gosh i'll um i'll try to do better mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i was looking at it reading reading the lines and i said oh, i'll try to do better you know uh, i hope i'm not driving people away I, i'm really you know reflect absorbing the 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 words of of the people that you know gave that sentiment so I, I don't know how it, you it, felt. It, it, <laughs> that's the documents that I sent it to you. Right. So, you know, just you know, the, the document I sent it to, to Father Melvin is, is the raw that yes. I just, I, I just transcribe it into, you know, on the, on it's the raw data. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just sent it to him and I said, Father, uh, this is mm. a raw, yes. you know, responses from the followers community. You take it in you. You know, yeah, really, you yeah. know, I did not tweak anything from yes, there. So, so it's yeah. not edited or anything. Yeah. No, no, no. And that should serve as a reflection for all of us, not right. only the clergy. And as Donna pointed out, even the regular, those active in the ministry of the church. Yes. Because um, we should, we should pay closer attention to that. Yes. For me, that's the, I mean, for them to express that. Yes. It probably was not easy for them yeah. to express that. And so we should give value and yes. do something about that. And, and as a parishioner too, if I am, a, uh, if I am a Filipino sitting next to a, to a South Korean, I should make sure, I should make sure that that person next to me is loved, you know, that he would feel or she would feel loved and accepted and welcomed. Welcome. You know, so least. because they are the ones who really sit next to the, I'm not, I'm right there at the altar, you know, at the altar on high, but mm. the people are the ones sitting next to each other and the, the welcome that they get, uh, the, the welcome that they will get from people sitting next to them. That's tr uh, treasure, treasure. That's mm. precious. First hand experience, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so everybody has a role in, in trying to uh, build a, a church, to build a, a welcoming community, uh, not just the priest, you know, not just the ministers in the church, even that person who is attending the, the celebration of the Mass. Yeah. You know? And there's so many ways to make people feel included, right? If mm -hmm. they're not comfortable reading... Maybe they want to, they have a little, a small choir that mm -hmm. they can come and sing or 
just mm. just different ways to participate. Yes, I mean, yes. there are so many um, responsibilities in the church. I mean, yeah. even getting the the what do you call it? The basket, the right. lusna. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, that's just yeah, yeah. Yeah. let's not always stick to the same involved. people. Yes, There's so yes. many ways to involve people. Right. I mean, let's yeah. be creative. No, I, 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 I'm reminded of this uh, uh, book written by a contemporary theologian, Brett Hoover, entitled Shared Parish. And, you know, what you did, what you mentioned, Father Melvin, about, you know, how in a parish life, how, you know, uh, what do we do also as pastors? Because, um, you know, with the concept of a shared parish is, again, just like that, give equal space, importance, priority to each group. Because sometimes in other places, when immigrants come into the church, yes, they're allowed to worship in their own language, but mm. give them like the 1 p.m. time slot. Mm. It's kind of, you know, because no one is using the church, right? So, yeah, you provide them a space and then you give them, you know, this, but then it's that kind of like ungodly hour. Mm. So simple things that we do and decide could either make or break a community. And so this author, when we talk about a shared parish, how can we truly be deliberate and intentional in making sure that this is a shared parish, that it's not discriminating and giving preference to one group over the other? And, and uh, um, yeah, I, I like this discussion because, you know, even in my role as bishop, I'm not originally from here, right? I have embraced this culture and... Uh, Thank you, Donna, for embracing me and loving me mm -hmm. and the people, your family. And but you know, um, it's not always. Share. It's mm -hmm. I, I. I have my own share also of not being accepted. Right. And I think, you know, uh, Deacon Tony, you mentioned about how we, when you started at NMC and early on in here, and the responses of the. Um, Synod and synodality of being excluded and being put on the side. I resonate with those words. And so now what can we do as given this responsibility to be more inclusive, to make sure that, you know, what we've also been through is not repeated. Right, right. I don't want to be emotional in here, but I think there's a real issues and challenges in the church. Well, personally for me as an outsider, what I try to do is, uh, like you said, embrace the culture. I, I try to learn the language. I try to learn the prayers. You know, this uh, this mm -hmm. is my way of saying um, I'm I'm willing. I'm I'm mm -hmm. here. I'm I'm with you. Um, I'm never gonna go away. You know, as far as my mission is concerned, I'm here in Saipan. Uh, take it or leave it. Uh, I I have to bloom where I am planted right now. A blooming means a blooming means I have to to learn uh, the, the mass. If I have to say uh, tomorrow mass, then so be it. You know, it's it's tough. It's a bit uh, challenging, but I will try. You know, it I, probably if we have the same attitude as people that we can the that we are. Uh, I will push myself into the center of you know and and be with the people. Of course, not everybody does have that kind of attitude, that kind of behavior. If those who do not have that kind of behavior, nobody will reach out to them, then they will be lost. You know, they will be lost. So it is the role of the church to, to reach out to them. You know, another aspect in, in that uh, synthesis was that they're not visited by the priest. Mm. <laughs> so it resonated on me, you know, mm. immediately. You know, but is a survey only St. Jude Parish? Oh, no. no. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, 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 uh, they pick, you know, from different, the different, um, yeah, places. different yeah. places. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this whole idea of Pope Francis, like, you know, a church that goes out. So again, that's, that's another to-do yes. list. This is actually not something new. This yes, concept yes. of, of, uh, cultural diversity this is the yeah. second vatican council mm -hmm. uh so this is old you know and and we are only uh reviewing whatever is already existing in in the church probably we didn't do well 
So mm-hmm. we need to be reminded of our role as really a uh, people of God. Mm-hmm. The church is a beautiful place. I mean, sure. look at it as a, if you look at it as a, as a banquet, you have adobo, you have the red <laughs> rice. If it's all only red rice, it's boring. You know, but if you all, if you have all the food in there from different kinds of food, it looks beautiful, appealing, delicious. It's colorful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or, especially if there's a velvet cake yeah. there that you make. <laughs> yeah, you have dessert, yeah. you, yeah. Have, you have coffee on the side. Don is a good baker. Yeah. You know, oh. we're a small island, but we're we're full of culture. We're a right, melting right. pot of diversity. Yeah, And we all may speak different languages, mm. but the one we do share is the nonverbal. And if you just feel that sense of welcome and acceptance, it's going to draw you back, right, you know, right. you'll learn things later. Like you, you just said, I'm learning the, to how to say the mass in, in the local language and all yeah. that. Why? Because you feel that mm-hmm. sense of belonging where you're right, at. Right. And I like to just add, you know, off the record, I think uh, Deacon Tony should be like out more in the other parishes and not just restricted to St. Jude. I think he needs to he needs to go out and um, and pull more folks together because he has that personality to do so. You know, yes. yeah, it's very yeah, humble. And, you know, well, like I told you guys, he's my tangible angel. So uh, he's a good person. He's yeah, an, he's he an is. asset. Now we'll canonize him. <laughs> he should. He deserves yeah. it. And yeah. I, I think that that is, you know, what Donna was sharing that, you know, be, for us to be more welcoming uh, as a church, we need this, the culture. We need the cu- culture diversity in our church. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, to be able to grow. And can you just imagine just Filipino just, um, you know, in one church and, and just strictly them or, you know, Chamori, just, you know, one church. And for us to have that uh, diversity in our church, we will continue to grow. But what we need to do as a church is to be more flexible of, of what we do in the church. Mm. You know, Donna mentioned about um, if a family comes and they request that, hey, uh, we have this special day. Can we can we do the reading for today? Although we have the schedule for, you know, already set for, you know, right. for, for the mm. day. Um, open it up mm-hmm. and, and that'll be more welcoming as say, okay, they welcome me. They, they accommodate mm-hmm. our, our request. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to continue to, you know, be going you right. know, to go to church. Yes. But if we like kind of strict in and just hold it, um, no, we already have assigned readers. Um, how can we grow? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we will say, no, we practice the readers already, so you know they know what to do. Well, how are they going to grow, and mm-hmm. how would they learn how to do the readings if we don't allow them? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, if we are more flexible into what we do, uh, that will be open up the door yes. and welcome everyone. Expose to, them, expose. right? Give them that opportunity. I mean, maybe they can be called guest readers. I know they're not. Um, Commissioned. Commissioned, you yes. know, it's how some, you know, how churches do that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I totally agree, Deacon Tony. I mean, give them that opportunity. And then who knows? One of them might come in and say, okay, I'm interested in being commissioned. I'd mm-hmm. like to come every Sunday and please put me on the list. That's how you get people yeah, involved. Right. You right. know, you give them ownership. And, and part of the reaching out, uh, the, the reaching out part of, of the parish too, I think it's a good um, thing to consider, uh, a good gesture that a parish can do is to really visit these people, talk to the people, reach out to them, um, to make them feel welcome, you know, that, that they are part of, of the church, that they are part of the community. Because I always see them, you know, sitting quietly on the pews after the mass, they leave right away. But these are beautiful people, you know, these are, this is a family of uh, a Pacific Islander family coming together. I, I see them all the time, very quiet family, but they leave right away. Coming if to I, praise yes, God. Yes. yes. And if we can reach out to them, get them involved. Imagine how beautiful the liturgy will be, uh-huh. will become. Um, the, the different kinds of music that you will hear, you know, 
that would be uh, so uh, many ideas popping yes. up right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's Let's right. Let's put them into action. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> but that that only um, proves that this only proves that the church has a lot to offer. There's so many treasures in the church, yes. and sometimes we close our eyes on these on, on these treasures. We shouldn't, you know. We shouldn't. We should take advantage of the the diversity in our culture. It means that the different colors of faith expressions uh, it'll make the the celebration more beautiful as well, you know. Um, but that's the reality of the church. We should not uh, close our eyes. You know, Definitely. we cannot deny the fact that we are, you know composed of different people here in the CNMI. No one's better than yes. the other. And whether we are talking about the society or a church, the reality is there, there is Chamorro, there is the Rifalawas, there is the Filipinos, we have the Koreans, we have the Chinese, the Japanese, the... Uh, we're children of God. We are, and we are all children of God and we are stepping on the same yes. island, you know, and, and let's make the most out of it you know? and uh, hopefully by coming together uh, by reaching out to all the people of different cultures bringing them to church we can turn the the church not only beautiful but we can also make uh, people become better catholics